Welcome back everybody. I got a new tool in the mail today. It's the Immersion RC RF Power Meter V2. Break it down, check it out, let you know what I think. Okay, we have the Immersion RC RF Power Meter V2. Comes in about $80 from the usual places. Uh, there was a, a V1 prior to this. It was very large, very expensive. And uh, I, I believe it's no longer available. Everywhere I'm looking it says it's discontinued. Uh, two very different tools, but um, we'll break this down and show you how it works and whether it's right for you or not. So first thing, very small packaging. Uh, as you can see, it's, I don't know, I mean, the box alone is less than three and a half inches. We'll slide it open. Oop, forgot to put that in there. It's a nice little uh, convenient frequency card that you should get from Race Day Quads whenever you order anything. Remove the top piece of foam, and here it is. Tiny little, little tool. Um, comes in about two and a half inches long. And it's a uh, triangular shape, so she won't roll off your bench. A um, little OLED screen and a little five position joystick. Real simple controls, rechargeable uh, via a USB cord. And it has a internal uh, lithium ion uh, CR1040 cell. Uh, from what I'm reading, it should get about eight hours of actual on time, which uh, is pretty good. Set that aside, and inside the box, you also get a uh, SMA to SMA male adapter, so you can do uh, direct radiated tests from like a VTX, and you also get a 2.4 uh, gigahertz sniffer antenna. So we'll we'll go over what that's all about. So one of the things I would suggest getting along with this is a RPSMA to SMA adapter in case you do have a uh, RPSMA pigtail on a VTX uh, because this is only going to go into a, I mean, this is just a SMA to SMA. So cover a little bit of the specs. Uh, uh, like I said, it's about $80 and it has a nice little OLED display on it. Go ahead and turn it on, just quick push of the button. Powers up, and if you push to the right, you get a uh, like a scanning, and then you get the uh, the sniffer test. Press down on the button, and then you can adjust what frequency it's going to be looking in. It's tuned from 5600 megahertz to 6000 megahertz in 50 megahertz steps. So you've got to find the frequency that's closest to what you're trying to trying to analyze. It also does 2.4 for your uh, your radio link does 1.2 does 900 so uh, and it doesn't list this on our website but it does do 900 megahertz for uh, I would assume that's for like if you're trying to detect like on a crossfire uses 900 megahertz uh, 868 as well uh, 433 72 35 and back up to 6,000. So, a couple different analyzation modes. You've got uh, average and peak. Uh, do average. Attenuator, so zero decibels because there's already a 30, uh, 30 dB internal uh, resistor or attenuator built into this thing, so you no longer have that big honking uh, attenuator hanging out of this like you did with the V1. But this thing is only rated to 500 milliwatts for less than 30 seconds. So if you're trying to go a longer span or a higher uh, power output, you'll need to put a external attenuator on. And here you would enter your attenuator value to compensate the readings for your external attenuators. Real smart idea. Um, makes it real easy. There's not a whole lot of math to do then. And then as far as your uh, the span, that's just um, like your sampling time. Alright, now let's see it in action. I've got it hooked up to a uh, T2 
TBS Unify HV, and I'm going to be on Fat Shark 1, so the frequency is uh, 5740. So I'll pick the closest frequency range on this. So that's uh, 5750 because it is only calibrated in uh, 50 megahertz frequencies. Go back, plug her in. And currently my currently my power output uh, for the VTX is set at 200 milliwatts. So as you can see, this is uh, it, it's outputting 131 milliwatts, but it's putting out 21 uh, dB. So when you're using something like this, you want to start thinking outside of the box of milliwatts. Start thinking about dB. Um, there's a in, in the manual. There's a good explanation of how dB works and how you how you calculate it. So 14 de decibels is basically 25 watts, and to get double the output, it's six decibels more. So twice the output is 20 decibels instead of 14 and not 100 milliwatts or uh, sorry not 50 milliwatts so let's go ahead and change this down to 25 milliwatts and we're getting about 15 milliwatts now this is all relative uh, readings so you would find a VTX that works good that you have no problems with and you'd use that as kind of your baseline and compare it to a VTX that isn't working quite so well. And that's what you'd use for comparison. 500 milliwatts, and I won't do this for too long. So there's 500, so that's 23 dB. So that's not twice the output of 200 milliwatts, even though it's more than twice the milliwatts, but the output isn't twice because it's not six decibels more. I'll go back down to 25 so we don't fry this thing. This thing. Okay, now let's talk about the sniffer mode with the 2.4 gigahertz uh, antenna on it. You can use it as kind of a baseline. So uh, I think the idea of this is so if you're like a race director, you can just go down to all the all the aircraft on the line and just see where they're at. So you would set this baseline for a well working transmission at 25 milliwatts. You would set your baseline, and then you would just go along and just see where everybody's at. So that little crosshair in the center, we'll set our zero for this particular rig, and you would just quickly go by tap everybody and if somebody's way low then they may have a problem or if they're way high they may not 25 milliwatts so this is a good real quick check to see where you're at so if I had four quads in my fleet set them all at 25 milliwatts just go through this one works really well use this as my baseline and just see where everybody's at compared to my baseline well working quad and VTX so final thoughts on the immersion RC RF power meter V2 is it worth it or not I think once you get into the game and you're really trying to go farther and better and, ha and your your video link is one of the most important things that you could make sure is working properly on any of your quads. Uh, for $80, I think that this is probably a really nice tool to have in your back pocket or in your toolbox uh, to help you diagnose those quads that just don't get the right amount of range. Is it a poor quality VTX? Is it a poor quality antenna? Maybe your uh, maybe your pigtail's bad. There's no really no way to know without actually just completely swapping out VTXs. And uh, you know VTXs they're not all built the same. Even though they all say they go up to 200 milliwatts and down to 25 milliwatts, they're not all the same. And this is a good way to verify what they're actually doing, whether they're doing what they're supposed to or not, or if they're damaged. So for, for the, the price of $80, I think this is, it's more of a luxury tool. I wouldn't expect a beginner or somebody who's just getting, getting their feet wet in the hobby to have one. But if you're a race director, yeah, you definitely want one of these. If you're really into the hobby and you want to maximize your potential and you're 
your 5.8 gigahertz video link, yeah, you definitely should have one of these. Uh, let me know what you think. Drop a comment down below. Uh, I'll put a link to this product in the description. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, like, please subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.